It has all the hallmarks of a Cold War thriller. Spies and secret meetings, gold and diamond deals, mysterious Russian oligarchs, and the biggest donation in British political history. Why should somebody whose sources of funding are completely unknown be allowed to influence British politics? For the best part of a year, Aaron Banks has been dogged by repeated accusations of close links with Russia. Are you Russian agents? Well, I'm still waiting for the check for President Putin for the alleged money, if that is the case. But no, of course not. He says revelations that he was offered lucrative business deals by the Russians before Brexit are exaggerated. You had lunch with someone, you met someone, therefore there's some dark Russian connection. All we did was have lunch. If you were looking for a pattern of activity, that's the kind of pattern that you, you might expect to see. And he claims he has never invested in Russia or intended to invest in Russia. No, never. Flat. Zero. Nothing. And in fact, I wouldn't do because I know it is a complicated place to do business. But that's not the whole truth. Channel 4 News has seen emails and documents that show for the first time that Aaron Banks and his associates did in fact pursue a lucrative gold deal offered to him via the embassy here in London by a millionaire Russian businessman with close ties to the Kremlin. And crucially, the offer was made in the heated months in the run-up to the Brexit referendum. The story begins in Doncaster at the UKIP conference in 2015. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There, Aaron Banks met a diplomat from the Russian embassy, more on him later, who suggested a lunch with the ambassador in London. Accepting the invitation, in this previously unseen email, Mr Banks flaunted his contacts with leading Republicans in America, telling the Russian official... There is massive interest in this referendum in the USA as well and we are shortly visiting Washington to brief on the campaign. We don't know precisely what was discussed at the meeting Aaron Banks famously referred to as a one-off six-hour boozy lunch, but we do know that just three days later, the Russians invited him to another meeting, and this time there was a juicy offer on the table. The meeting was set for mid-November. There to welcome Mr Banks again was the ambassador, Alexander Yakovenko, Putin's man in London. And with him, Siman Povarenkin, a Kremlin-connected mining tycoon with interests in gold and diamonds. All this, of course, set in train by Alexander Udod, the man who first approached Mr Banks at the UKIP conference. He was later expelled after the Skripal poisoning affair for suspected spying. Poverinkin unveiled the opportunity in this presentation, the plan that his mining company, GeoPro Mining, would take over six of Russia's smaller gold miners and combine them into a new company worth $8 billion. Why does one gold deal matter? Businessmen like Aaron Banks are sifting through opportunities all the time. But this was no ordinary time. The Brexit referendum was just round the corner and suddenly in stepped the Russians with a seemingly jaw-dropping business opportunity. Now, Mr Banks has always dismissed it as a non-story, but this document shows for the first time that not only did he and his associates want in on it, they appeared to want to run the entire deal. It was a bullish pitch written at Mr Banks' behest by a finance company called Oakwell Capital, in which Mr Banks owned a substantial stake. The document, Consolidation of Russian Gold, exclusively obtained by Channel 4 News, reveals detailed plans to bring in investment banks, reach out to lawyers and accountants on a no-names basis, a $4 billion cash pile and a Swedish shell company as a vehicle for the transaction. And it makes clear that Mr Banks and his partners would be... ...extremely interested in overseeing the entire project. But remember how he dismissed doing business with Russia before? No, never. Flat. Zero. Nothing. And in fact, I wouldn't do because I know it is a complicated place to do business. In the pitch, what's striking is that Aaron Banks and his associates appear in no doubt that businesses with close connections to the Kremlin will simply ease the deal through. Among them, the Russian state-backed bank, Spurbank, who was a big lender and a major part of the deal, and with whom Mr Banks and his partners wanted... ..a confidential meeting at the earliest possible convenience. As to where the cash would come from, well, that was easy. 
it's assumed that this would be made available through friends of GeoPro Mining. What's Mr Banks Associates saying here? What are they assuming, do you think? That paragraph says to me that they expect the funding to come one way or another from the Russian government. Is there any doubt, you think, that Mr Banks would have known what was happening here? No, there's no doubt. Aaron Banks doesn't go to a meeting with the Russian ambassador and receive a series of Russian contacts and be offered a deal that seems to have Russian state bank funding um, and then hide it, you know, because it's a normal deal. No, these are not normal deals. These are, these are forms of political bribery. Certainly the man they wanted to strike a deal with had some pretty powerful friends. For one, nearly a third of Mr. Povarenkin's mining company is owned by the Russian banking giant Spurbank. In turn, Spurbank is itself owned by the Russian state, and President Putin held the bank's chief executive as one of his closest associates, the man who would ultimately finance the mega gold deal. А вторая ситуация, когда ты идешь во взаимодействии с российским правительством, дает тебе некие нерыночные преференции, но при этом ты должен понимать, что взамен от тебя тоже что-то попросят. Whether Mr. Banks knew it or not, he was only one step removed from the Kremlin. One man knows exactly how the Russian state gradually tightens its grip. Mikhail Khodorkovsky was once thought to be Russia's richest man before he was imprisoned by Putin for fraud. Now he's the Kremlin's leading critic in exile. So if we talk about not about Russia, а про Кремль, про путинское окружение, то эти люди, да, вполне для них нормальным является пропустить деньги через некоторую цепочку а, или пропустить услуги через некоторую цепочку и получить на выходе а, результат а, поддержки того а, политического решения, которое им интересно. В данном случае им конкретно а, интересно решение о Брексите. If the gold deal was bait, Mr. Banks and his associates appear to have swallowed it. A week after responding with their pitch document, there was an email follow-up, even offering to travel to Russia. To move the plan forward, both Aaron and I were wondering whether you could arrange for us to meet the appropriate Spurbank decision maker, and perhaps in Moscow, if it is appropriate. Their aim to identify the financial muscle behind the deal. Mr. Banks insists that trip to Russia never happened, but nevertheless, former spy chief Sir David Omond says the apparent courting of Mr. Banks bears all the hallmarks of a Russian influence operation. You don't want the source of the money to be too obvious, uh, or to be obvious at all. Um, the, you have to sort of put the money out through sources that themselves appear to be legitimate business deals and offering of business deals would be one obvious way of doing that. But the gold deal wasn't the only opportunity. There were also suggestions Mr Banks could invest in the world's largest diamond company, Al Rosa, which is partially owned by the Russian state. Mr Banks denies that he invested in any of these schemes, but the offers kept coming. At the end of April, a short time before the Brexit referendum, another email opportunity came his way for a number of gold mines in West Africa. This time, a Russian mini-oligarch who shares your passion for the yellow metal was offering another lucrative deal. It's easy to get lost in the minutiae of a few deals, but it's the wider context that's more important. These offers were brought to Aaron Banks in the run-up to the Brexit referendum. Then his contact with his new Russian friends continued throughout the politically charged summer of 2016 and then crucially into the months leading up to the presidential election in America. Now the Russian embassy says it was only doing its job, forging links with British businessmen. But with President Putin a known supporter of Brexit, their decision to befriend Mr Banks was timely, to say the least. Без всякого сомнения, российское правительство в курсе тех мероприятий, которые происходят при участии российского посла. Было бы странно, если было бы иначе. In fact, Channel 4 News has seen email invitations to at least two other lunches with the ambassador and a string of evening drinks events and parties at the Russian residency in London, right up to the summer of 2017. 
The referendum succeeded spectacularly for Mr Banks. <laughs> Too bad, was it? But not everything did. In the end, it seems the gold deal never did come off. Mr Banks and his partners were never bankrolled by the bullion. But it's in the trying, the meetings that he failed to disclose and the efforts to make it happen that the red flags were raised. Those suspicions have led to an ongoing investigation by Britain's National Crime Agency, which is trying to uncover the true source of Aaron Banks' £8 million Brexit donation. This is a failure of the British legal system, of the serious fraud office, um, uh, of the Electoral Commission. Um, these are all groups and organisations that were set up in a previous era uh, and really have not been able to cope with either the new kinds of money that can flow into the UK economy and be used for political reasons, um, or the new possibilities for online disinformation, which is of course the other way in which the Russians seek to now affect um, elections. Can you talk gut feelings here? What do you think? I think we may never know the truth. Because those concerned, if wrongdoing was taking place, will have covered their tracks. With Aaron Banks' intricate web of offshore entities and Russia's notoriously opaque corporate world, it's almost impossible to discover if money was ever funneled to Mr Banks from his Russian associates. But politicians and three government bodies here, including the National Crime Agency, are determined to try. For now, Brexit, Banks and the Russians is a story with an ending still unfolding. Well, Siobhan Kennedy is now with me here in the studio. Siobhan. Well, um, Mr Banks' response, John, he has repeated the line that he often has trotted out in response to his questions about his dealings with Russia and Russian deals, which is, you can see it here, potential investment opportunities were assessed and rejected at the time. He went on to say that this particular gold deal in my report there, that he referred to Lord Guthrie, who is the former head of the British Army himself, has many business dealings with Russia and that Lord Guthrie told Mr Banks and his partners referred them to, you can see here again his response, a Russian gold expert, Peter Hambro, otherwise known as Goldfinger. We had one short meeting about the potential project and then rejected rejected it. Well, what he didn't say, of course, is that Mr Hambro wasn't just any old gold expert, John. He was the man in charge of one of the six gold miners that Mr Banks and his partners were planning to take over to form this new big Russian mining giant. So have you spoken to Mr Hambro? I did speak to Mr Hambro today. He says, yes, he had a very short meeting with Mr Banks. He couldn't really remember all the details, he said, but he did tell him that he wasn't interested in doing business with him, thereby confirming that Mr Banks was actually trying to pursue this deal. What's interesting about Mr Banks' response too is that he doesn't deny, John, our central allegation, this new pitch document that proves for the first time that he was, in fact, much more interested in doing this gold deal with Russia than he has ever let on before. In fact, what he says instead is, the funding of our Brexit campaign came from myself and other UK-based donors. I look forward to the NCA, the National Crime Agency report, in due course. Now, we spoke to the NCA today. They said, John, that they would go wherever the evidence leads us. Siobhan Kennedy and... Um... More informally, Mr Banks took to Twitter today and described our story as 24 carat bollocks. And he also added, I think you've got a crush on us, you old left-wing softie. <laughs>